Hi, my name is Stephen Fine. I'm a freshman at MIT, class of 2015, and I'm also a member of the Experimental Study Group. Today I would like to talk about the Lorenz transformation. The Dutch physicist Hendrik Lorenz derived these equations, and these equations have many uses in modern day physics. For the purposes of this video, we will derive the Lorenz transformation between two frames in relative motion along the x-axis. One thing that I find really amazing about the Lorenz transformation and physics in general is that you can use math to explain and predict events that are going to happen in the physical world. The first thing that we need to understand is what it means to have a transformation between two different frames of reference. Suppose we have two people, person A and person B, and they're standing 10 meters apart. Further suppose that they see an object flying above their heads. Person A and person B will both describe the object as having the same Y components at any given time. However, person A will see the object's X component shifted over by 10 meters with respect to person B's X component. Any event that these people want to describe can be converted from one reference frame to the other with these equations. In this case, the event is the flying object, but this holds for any event that we want to describe. An event indicates something that happens at a given location in space and time. The Lorenz transformation transforms between two different reference frames when one is moving with a constant velocity with respect to the other. It differs from the Galilean transformation in that it takes special relativity into account. The main principle of special relativity is that independent of reference frames, any observer always sees light traveling at the same speed. We denote this speed with the letter C. Suppose we have an astronaut and a spaceship that are initially at the same location, and at the moment the spaceship is launched with velocity v, a light pulse is also emitted in the same direction. If we want to determine how far the light pulse has traveled from the astronaut after a given interval of time, we'll use the equation of physics that the displacement equals the velocity, which in this case is c, times time. The spaceship also sees the light pulse traveling with a speed c. Therefore, the distance that the light will have traveled from the spaceship will also equal ct. To denote the different reference frames, we put a prime next to the d for the spaceship. But clearly, since the spaceship is moving with respect to the astronaut, the light cannot be the same distance from both of them. Therefore, we know that they must experience time in a different way. So we denote the t with a prime. The Lorenz transformation will help us understand exactly what is happening in this situation. To derive the Lorenz transformation, we need to start out with an arbitrary transformation. We initially start out with z prime equals z, y prime equals y, x prime equals ax plus bt, and t prime equals dx plus et. In special relativity, length only contracts in the direction of motion the coordinates y and z that are perpendicular to the direction of relative motion between frames are the same in both frames. For the x prime and t prime transformations, we take an arbitrary set of constants as coefficients for our x and t, and through four scenarios we derive what these coefficients have to be. If we can successfully derive what these four coefficients have to be, in different scenarios, we know that it will be true in all scenarios if our transformation is to work. The first scenario that we'll look at is that of a boat moving with a constant velocity with respect to the dock. Suppose we want to determine how each observer would describe the boat's location. t equals t prime equals zero, and x and x prime are initially at the same location. In this case, the person on the dock perceives the boat to be moving with a velocity v, therefore after any interval of time, the person on the dock will see the boat as having gone a distance of vt. However, from the boat's perspective, the dock is moving backwards with a velocity negative v, so the boat doesn't perceive himself to be moving. The boat's position is always going to be at a location of x prime equals zero. Plugging these into our transformation, we derive that minus av must equal b. Plug this back into our equation, we get that x prime equals ax minus avt and t prime equals dx plus et. Since this is true in this scenario, it must be true in all other scenarios. The second scenario has the same boat and the same dock, however in this case we want to determine where the location of the dock is from both perspectives. Since the person on the dock doesn't perceive himself to be moving, he would describe his location at the coordinate x equals zero. However, since the person on the boat, as we saw before, perceives the dock to be moving in the opposite direction with velocity v, he would describe the dock's location at a position minus v t prime. Here we use a prime because t prime denotes how the person on the boat experiences time. If we plug this into our current transformation, 
we get that a equals e. So if we plug this back into our equation, our new transformation becomes x prime equals a times x minus vt, and t prime equals dx plus at. For the next two scenarios, we'll take a look back at our scenario with our rocket ship and our astronaut. At t equals t prime equals zero, we launch our rocket ship with a constant velocity v in the x direction. We also at the same time emit a light pulse in the same direction. If after an arbitrary interval of time, the astronaut wants to describe where the light pulse is, he would describe its location as x equals ct because the light pulse will have traveled with a speed c an interval of time t. Since from the rocket ship's perspective, as we saw before, the light is also traveling with a velocity c. Therefore, he would describe it as x prime equals c t prime. If we plug this into our transformation, we get that d equals minus a v over c squared. Plugging this in, our newest version of the transformation is that x prime equals a times x minus vt, and t prime equals a times minus vx over c squared plus t. Our fourth and final scenario is that which we have at t equals t prime equals zero. Our rocket ship gets launched in the x direction with velocity v. However, our light pulse is emitted in the y direction, traveling at speed c. Since the astronaut sees the light traveling only in the y direction, he would describe the light's location as y equals ct. However, the rocket ship sees the light as not only moving upwards, but also in the negative x prime direction. Therefore, using Pythagorean theorem, we get that minus x prime squared plus y prime squared equals ct prime squared, because the total distance that the light must have traveled from the rocket ship's perspective is ct prime. We also know that y equals y prime because the rocket ship is only moving in the x direction with respect to the astronaut. They must always perceive any object to have the same y component. Plugging this all in, after lots of algebra, we get that a equals 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. In special relativity, we denote this as gamma, which is also called L factor. So at last we have our transformation. Our transformation has finally become x prime equals gamma times x minus vt, and t prime equals gamma times t minus vx over c squared. If we want to go to any of the scenarios we have visited before, we can describe where the rocket ship is and where the astronaut is, or even where our dock and where our boat are, using this transformation. Furthermore, we can see that when v is much smaller than the speed of light, which is the case in most of classical mechanics, gamma is approximately 1. So our transformation becomes x prime is approximately x minus vt, and t prime is approximately t. For any of you who are familiar with classical mechanics, you will recognize this as the Galilean transformation. This makes perfect sense considering the Galilean transformation is a good approximation when one frame is moving with a small velocity relative to another frame. To summarize, we looked at four different scenarios to derive what the different constants of the Lorentz transformation had to be, and since they have to be true in these four scenarios, it must be true in every scenario. Therefore, we now have a transformation that can determine how one reference frame observes any event to happen that another reference frame might also observe, even if one is moving with a velocity with respect to the other.